Right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using CSS, uh, HTML5, and Java, a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something that I saw in a forum uh, not too long ago uh, about CSS Grid. CSS Grid is still pretty new. It came out about a year and a half ago now, and uh, or at least it was in all the browsers at that point. And so everybody's been using it for about a year or so. And there's still some kind of common misconceptions about it. Uh, I think that so many people are accustomed to writing their grids in Bootstrap or Foundation or some other framework that it's hard to make that transition over to understand fully uh, what CSS Grid is and what it can do. So one of the things I'm gonna that I heard in the forum was that you know I don't want to use it because uh, it makes responsive styling too difficult and it's actually supposed to make it easier <laughs> in a lot of ways so uh, I just wanted to kind of debunk that that myth and uh, show you a couple of different strategies uh, that I use and that you can use also for building CSS grid into your website um, I prefer to work from a mobile first perspective so I do all my websites uh, you know I write the HTML and then I began to write the CSS for mobile styles first, and then and as the breakpoints go up, I just add, or as the size of the viewport goes up, I, I add breakpoints, and then, you know, just whatever adjustments I need to make as the uh, viewport size increases. So uh, I'm just gonna show you in this video um, a couple of different strategies. I've talked about this in another video before, but uh, not quite where this is the only thing I talk about, but um, let's just take a look at the setup and I'll explain to you what I'm doing. I have four items here and they're each uh, images. You can see over here, these are my four images. Um, I'm getting these if you're curious from something called uh, Unsplash Source. If you go to source.unsplash.com, if you don't know about Unsplash, go to Unsplash and you can see all the the free images that you can use for your projects. Um, but they have something called source.unsplash.com, which is essentially like a low level API that's super duper easy to add to your uh, website or whatever you're doing. Um, basically, you're just putting in um, a web URL. You've seen me use a, a service called pixum.photos before. Uh, it's very similar to that, except you have access to their full library. Uh, I would I would start transitioning over to this if you uh, have used Lorem Pixum in the past or, or you're using it now. Um, what I'm doing is I'm getting a random image from a collection. And on my own uh, Unsplash account, I have some different collections that are set up. They're just where I've gone through uh, some, this is for my Cities of the World app. Uh, so this is where I get all the images for that and I can manage and manipulate all those images. Um, but essentially, I have a bunch of collections set up uh, for these different cities. And then, you know, they have a, it's just a collection of photos. And then for each collection, there's this individual um, collection ID, I guess. And then basically, I'm just putting that collection ID right here and then it's pulling a random photo. So if I refresh this, it'll just pull a random photo from each of those collections. Um, so that's where I'm getting my my images from, and then you can choose you know, what size you want the images to be. Um, they can be square. If you just take that part off, it will be 1600 by 1600, or you can specify a size, uh, either one. So it's a really great place uh, if you need a web-based image to be able to get free web-based images that you can just put into, especially CodePen pens, uh, where you don't have to download the image and upload it to CodePen or something. I have some basic styles here, just taking the margin off the body and then making sure that these images are responsive and 100% uh, width so that they don't go across the page. Obviously, they're 1,600 pixels wide, and this is only 425 pixels wide so uh, the images go off the page uh, so I've just added a little responsive you know so that they take up a hundred percent of the container that they're in and no more <clears throat> uh, 
All right, so we're going to make a, a grid. And the way to do that, I'm just going to wrap this with a div that says grid. And then I'm gonna just going to put this nested underneath it. I'm using pug. If you don't know what pug is, it's uh, kind of like SAS for HTML. It's just a templating uh, compiler language. And it allows me to write more instead of having to write all this. Um, it's just a little bit cleaner, easier to write and understand. I can also write uh, some templating uh, sort of things like mix-ins and things like that. So uh, it's a really lovely language. It will change the way you code if you uh, if you really adopt it and begin to use it. Even if you just use the basics of it, you don't use the mix-ins and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just being able to write like this helps me to see the code more easily and to write it more quickly. So, uh, so we have a grid container, and then inside that, all of our grid items are uh, image uh, divs. So divs with the class of image. And you can see now that on mobile, you know this this site does everything that it's supposed to do. Uh, there's not really a need to add. CSS grid to this because we're not actually creating a grid yet. Our grid is just stacked one on top of the other and this is how a lot of responsive sites uh, are <clears throat> and that's why people tell you to develop mobile first because the natural flow of the page, the natural flow of the HTML is for everything to stack on top of one another. So any of these, a div is a block level element so it takes up uh, the full width of the container that it's in. Right now it's all inside this grid uh, which is taking, it's a div, so it's taking up the full width of the body container. So at this point there's no real reason uh, that we need to uh, make any changes, honestly. Um, we can just leave it as is and it's going to act just fine. Now when you get to a certain size you know when you get out here this is 600 pixels so when you get out here maybe at this point you want to set a breakpoint uh, so that you have these images um, maybe two up so one on each side kind of like a book page so that's where I would come in this is how I normally develop so then I would come in and I would say I would uh, explicitly say at the minimum width of 600 pixels <clears throat> then I'm going to say grid to display grid and then we have to set our columns so grid template columns is um, we're just going to have the same ones so you can either write it as one fr one fr and that will make it 50 percent you can see that it's made the change so each column takes up uh, 50 percent essentially with two two columns. Uh, you can also write it this way. You could say repeat to 1FR and this kind of sets us up uh, for later that we can add uh, different breakpoints and we can just change this number right here. So that's easy. And then uh, this is really everything that we want. So we just if you wanted some space you could put the grid gap um, to be let's say one rim so like 16 pixels and then you put a little spacing between each one or you can set that in actual pixels and say something like five pixels so it's just a little bit of spacing between each one and so that happens you know you're mobile 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 and then all of a sudden at 600 pixels uh, you get a two up sort of grid and then if you wanted to set another breakpoint, <clears throat> let's say we have uh, one, two, three, four, let's just add a few more images here. Okay, so we have quite a few more images, uh, and at this point we have everything single column, so just straight down the page, 
and then when we get out to 600 pixels then we get a two column layout uh, let's say at 900 pixels we wanted to do a four column layout so we're not there yet uh, but if we go out to let's see if we can get a little space here go out to 900 then all of a sudden we have four columns across okay so uh, you can see that we don't necessarily need to start out with a grid layout we have our our grid ready and we have our structure ready inside the HTML but we don't necessarily need to apply this CSS uh, grid until we really need it so that's how I like to develop grid but you obviously could come in and you could take all this and you could take this part away take away the, the query and then you just add all your grid elements here and then instead of repeat two you would just say one fr and then that would take uh, that would take up all the space if you didn't want any gap between them you just take the gap out and then all of a sudden when you're down here we've applied grid but we've applied grid uh, from the very beginning to only be uh, one column that takes up all of the unit of the space so one fr says take up all of the all of the space available for that column so we have one column that's taking up all the space which is essentially what we have with the flow of the page so if you wanted to do something specific with grid uh, at the smaller sizes then you could do that here let's say you wanted to be able to to kind of offset the images or move the images around or something like that then you would do that here but it's not com this is not completely necessary when all you're doing is just stacking everything together now if you had uh, the whole thing in a bigger grid and you wanted to do something different then you would you would certainly call uh, the display grid uh, on the page load even if it was on mobile um, and then once you get here you really only need to change this part we don't need to just we don't need to make these well for this one we do need the grid gap and then here we don't need that and we don't need that and then once we once we get to 600 then we get uh, the two column layout and once we get to 900 we get the four column layout um, now you can lay this out any way that you want to you can change the um, you can say 1fr 2fr 1fr 1fr like this and then you kind of have a featured section so this one is taking up two times the amount of space that the rest of them are uh, it's kind of goofy looking but it is possible to do that kind of thing or you could have this take up twice the amount of space so these two are taking up twice the amount of space these are only taking up uh, one part of the available space so it's kind of a strange setup but uh, you can see the power of uh, the way that you write uh, your grid so uh, hopefully this clears up some misconceptions about grid as a, a responsive styling essentially if you just want the stack look all you do is grid template columns uh, one fr and then that gives you uh, this nice responsive uh, stacked kind of look and as long as you set your um, you set your containers to hundred percent of the width uh, especially any media so images or whatever uh, text is going to flow naturally uh, unless you change that so uh, an image if it has a, a larger width than the viewport screen then you're going to need to add the width of 100 percent well i hope this clears some things up for you if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and um, you can follow me on twitter you can also ask questions on twitter my twitter handle is at Brian Haffercamp, B R I A N. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.